Good morning, everyone. It is 10 o'clock and it is time for another episode of Midweek Motivation Live with me, your host, Patrick Lee. I hope everyone is doing well today here on another a brisk uh, Wednesday morning in Amarillo, Texas, downtown, coming to you from Studio One, the downtown tower, First Bank Southwest Building, 18th floor. My office, I like to call the studio. I uh, hope everyone's doing well today. We're going to be talking about some ways to live a better life. I know that we talk about a lot of different topics on this show. Some of them overlap. Um, today, we're going to be sharing some some tips on how to live a better life. People ask me, uh, they ask my wife a lot if I am always happy. Is Patrick always happy? Is he always this way? And she'll say, for the most part, yes. And sometimes it's been a joke. It can be annoying at times to her because if, as we go through life, um, you know, some people can uh, sometimes dwell on things that are a little less positive, maybe a little more negative. Um, and it's easy to get down in the dumps. And I try not to, but even. Even me, your host, I get down in the dumps from time to time, or I'm not feeling as positive as I should. Um, but there, are, I'm going to be sharing some tips with you today, how to live a better life overall in general. I, I mean, whether it's in, uh, in your home life, your business life, um, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks, um, some things, things that I think that are important. I think that will help you people. Uh, tuning in already to the show today, liking and loving the show. I love that. Appreciate you for tuning in. We're going to jump right back into these six um, six ways for you to live a better life right after this. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys for coming back to watch the show, Midweek Motivation Live, each and every week. I appreciate that so much more than you know. Midweek Motivation Live now on all major podcast platforms. We've had people finding us recently on a lot of different platforms and uh, come came back from Vegas um, a week ago, a week and a half ago. We talked a lot about some of those things that I learned and a, and a few important lessons that I picked up while I was in Vegas as well. Made a lot of new friends while I was out there. Good morning, Marlene. Got a cup of coffee emoji. I'm drinking my drinking my good old Folgers today. Folgers coffee from Patrick Lee's Coffee House in uh, here in Amarillo, Texas. My home. I love good. Old, it's hard to beat Folgers coffee. I go out. Roasters is my favorite local coffee roaster. Hello, Christine. My amazing sister-in-law. How are you today? Happy and blessed day to you as well. But yeah, I make my, I make some great coffee. I make coffee at my church. We have a coffee shop, espresso um, bar, um, but then also give free coffee. And uh, we have people that make coffee for our free coffee that we hand out. And it's Folgers and everyone always comes over for the free coffee and they're like, hey man, this is great coffee. Where do you get this? We're like, it's Folgers and I make it there too. And people come up to me a lot of times on Sunday and Wednesday and they're like, we love it when Patrick Lee is in the house making the coffee. We know it's good coffee and it's a, it's hard to beat good Folgers coffee. And uh, so I love that. I know most of the people watching the show, are my coffee drinking friends. I don't overload on it sometimes like I used to. Uh, too much coffee, too much of anything is not necessarily good for you, but I love a couple of cups of good Good, strong coffee. Uh, you and Eric, the Folgers brothers. We are uh, the Folgers brothers. Uh, but I want to give you some. I want to dive into this today. Uh, I don't want to take up a ton of your time, but I, you know, I've, I've said this. People ask my wife a lot and other people, is Patrick always happy? Is he always cheerful? Is he always positive? That answer is not a resounding yes. It's something that I strive to do. And these are some of the reasons some of the ways, some of the things that I try to focus on that help me in my life, and maybe they will help you in your life as well, because it can be so easy to focus on or concentrate on the negative things that happen in life. Hey, listen to the news. 
If you open up YouTube, if you go to uh, TikTok, if you go to Instagram, if you go to, to television, any social media platform that you open up, it's negativity. It's the war going on. Um, it's interestingly enough, it's not the war in Ukraine. It's the war in Israel right now in the Gaza Strip going on. We're not hearing about the war in Ukraine for some reason. That's a, a, another topic for another day. But there's so much negativity going on all around us and people are are really beginning to lose hope, beginning to lose faith. And, and a lot of things are going on in life and it's the topics, these topics everyone wants to talk about. And I'm not choosing to avoid those topics, but I am choosing to focus on the things that are gonna help us not go crazy that maybe help us stay a little more motivated in life and learn um, and concentrate on the things that are going to help us stay more sane, more level-headed, more grounded, and more positive um, about our life. So six ways to live better. I think everyone wants to live better. Hey, listen, I have so much going on in my life and my family's life right now. It would uh, turn my hair grayer than it already is if I didn't try to focus on these specific things. Uh, and we're going to jump into these. Number one, create a good culture. I, one of the things that I have tried to do in my life and in my family over the last 20 years specifically, uh, my kids are 26 and 31. So while they were young, you when your kids are babies, you basically just try to make it through, right? Raise your hand if that was you. You just try to make it through. You want your kids to stay alive. You don't want to drop them on their head when they're a baby. You want them to bounce back from struggles they're going through. But when you're that young, um, you're trying to keep everyone alive. You're trying to keep the bills paid. You're trying to keep the power on at your house. Um, but as you get your feet under you, you need to start creating a good culture. Now, culture starts when you're a kid. Of course, your parents help you with that. Maybe you had a family culture, but maybe your family culture was not healthy for you in your new family, in your adult life. So we're talking, of, this can apply to a lot of different people. Start where you are, but one of the things that I have learned to create in my life is a good culture. I am different than you. If two of us are identical, one of us is obsolete and really isn't necessary, correct? learned that years ago. So I don't try to be the mere image of another person. The only person I try to reflect is Christ. I believe that we all should. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So we try to do that as best we can, but we are all unique. Shouldn't your culture be unique as well? Your culture needs to be as unique as you are while you are learning how to have this good life. If you have no culture, that will be reflected in how you live. And you know people like this. They're, they don't have any culture or their culture is so poor, they are stuck in this rut of living, low level living. Um, so number one, the thing that you I would urge you all to create in your life is create a good culture, something that fits your life um, and continues to grow that. Develop a culture of friendliness, of positivity, of believing the best in people as opposed to the best, uh, the worst. If, if someone comes to you with an issue or they make a comment and your response is always negative or your response is to always think on something that's not as positive as them, why do you even open your mouth? Is that a culture that you have created of, of always re repaying um, a question or a comment was something more negative, thinking that, well, you know, there used to be, uh, I'm telling my age here, but it used to be Droopy Dog, right, in the cartoons. Um, and he would show up in these different cartoons and he always had this droopy face and he always had a negative response to everything that happened. Don't you think it would be much better for you to be the quick response with a positive reply, with words of grace, and blessing and positivity, you need to learn to, to start creating that culture in your life and in your family. Hello, Sal watching already. Uh, yes, Christine says, we call that assigning good intent. Absolutely. And, every, and, and a business creates a culture. And you, Christine, knows this. Any one of you that have, have a business, 
Um, you're, you can live a better life by creating a good culture that is as unique as you are in your home world, your family circle. But we also talk a lot in the business world about the culture, the culture of a particular company, a team within that company, perhaps a boss as well. Create a culture as unique as you are, but that is unique to you that breeds positivity. I like I like that. Assigning good intent. That's very good uh, because a good culture believes the best in other people, in your business, in your work, in your work world. Um, number two, your faith. And there are many of you, you know, I'm a person of faith. I don't push that on people. I believe in sharing faith because we are called to do that. Share the good news of Christ. Um, but having faith in your life, it forms a foundation for everything else in your life. Now, faith is the uh, the particle of life that causes this positivity in me to come forward. Because when I have the opportunity to think negative thoughts or to think that everything that can go wrong will go wrong, um, that faith comes back and helps me to maintain this positive mindset, this belief that I am in control of my destiny and things can go well if I focus on that uh, that positive thought, that my faith is here to help me, that God is here to bless me and my family, that my finances are protected while I honor God with my finances, that my health is going to be divine in nature, and I'm not going to walk in sickness and disease all of the time. Um, I'm currently on this weight loss journey. I'm down 20 pounds and I'm feeling much better. Is my health perfect? No, but I claim that it is all the time. I walk in divine health. Um, I do the things that I need to do. I do supplementation and I do work out. I need to work out more and I understand that. And, uh, and that's part of my journey. But this faith I have is this uncanny belief that everything that can go right will go right. If I believe that, if I have faith in God that he's going to protect me, care for me, take care of my health, watch over me and bless me as I bless him and his kingdom, the faith becomes one of the best, uh, most important uh, pillars in building the rest of my life. So if you want to live better, uh, learn to develop your faith. And many of you that watch the show are, are Christian believers. You believe in, in God, the creation of the universe. Um, I believe in the quantum field. Don't get me wrong. I believe God created it. It's part of um, our makeup. The vibrations are there. They are real. I am also a, a student in, in music and sound and waves and transference and worked in the acoustics industry for a few years and can tell you that sound waves and frequencies and vibrations are all very real. They were all created by God. I believe those are part of the ways that God created the things that he created and caused things to come into existence. So it doesn't, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter what you believe. It absolutely matters what you believe in, but faith is the number one um, glue that holds everything else together. Otherwise, what is what what do the rest of these things that I'm going to talk to you about matter if you don't have faith? Okay. Good morning, Pete. Good to see you on here as well. Pete uh, actually has, I think one of you, one of Peter's uh, social media profiles actually has the word culture. We were talking in the previous tip about culture. Um, one of Peter's social media handles actually is culture has the word culture in it. I'm trying to remember exactly what that is. But number one, of course, creating a good culture in your life that's as unique as you are. Number, number two, learn to walk in faith. Believe that the best things in life are out there for you and you can have them if you desire them. Sow the right seeds into your future and expect that harvest to come back. Number three, you need to have some good friends in your life. Learn to develop your relationships. We talk about relationships all the time. Sometimes we'll do a whole show just on your relationships, but you need good friends in your life for this main purpose. You need a support 
system. No man is an island unto himself. We are a, 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 um, we are a population of people that needs other people. We live, we should develop this culture of living for others, developing this culture that's as unique as we are, having a faith that we believe the best in others, but we need these other people in our life to help support us and for us to support them. A sponge that does nothing but absorb, 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 and never gets wrung out becomes stagnant, smelly, and ugly over time. You need this support system. So as you um, absorb things from others, as you absorb positivity and faith and good wishes that you can turn around and be wrung out and let that pour into your friends, your sphere of influence, your friend system. You need the support system where uh, people that can hold you accountable and say, hey, you know, your attitude's kind of sucking right now. Dude, what's going on in your life? How can I help you when things are going wrong? Can I pray for you? Sometimes I'll be somewhere and someone's talking negative or they're sharing things that are going on in their life. And I'll just put my hand on their shoulder and just say, hey, can I just pray for you for a second that we get this taken care of, that your health improves or someone in your family is healed or your attitude gets better because it's really negative right now. And I know that this is not who you want to be. Those are the kind of things that our friends, our friends can help us with that support system that we have. One of the greatest support systems in the world we can have is our friends. Now you need those friends in your personal life, your family life, your church life, and your business life. You need a good friend at work. How many of you know that you can become two different people? And well, in with the three things we just talked about, you could be three different people and you're wearing these different masks around your house. You can say that's who I really am. But when you are at your church or at your place of faith um, and around those friends, you become a different person. Uh, and then when you're at work, you may become a total jerk. Um, and everyone knows who that person is, but you, they're one way in public, they're another way in private. The things that they can say um, in private in a group chat, they're not going to say publicly online. We all know who those people are. Uh, raise your hand if you are one. Um, we, we live these different lives because we walk in different circles and we, I have a lot of circles, a work circle, a faith circle, a, a, a family circle. But I try to be as consistent as I can throughout that timeline of, of these different circles. Um, it just it's important for you. And we talk about being true to yourself, but you need the support system of good friends, the wonderful people um, who know about you and still like you. Um, even in on the days that you're having some negative thoughts or things are not going so well. Um, I call and checked on a friend yesterday that that we do we work together and his health is not good and I'm going to the hospital to visit with him this afternoon. Um, and we run into people at work that are going through things and we we have things going on in our personal lives right now and family with with family members that are in poor health. But I have to have friends that we can talk to about that. I talked to a friend yesterday and they just lost their grandmother. We haven't seen them for a few days and, and we can relate to that and say, I know my wife's grandmother is going through some health issues, too. We know that her time on this earth is not going to be much longer. Um, and we're concentrating on developing the last few uh, last amount of time that we have with her in a very positive and faith filled manner. The, you need these people in your life. You're your good friends. You need this support system. Um, then next, we need to be um, productive. Pro productivity, for you to live a better life, you need to have some level of productivity in your life. If you're not productive, you don't feel good about yourself. If you don't have anything in your life to do for you to be productive, I recommend you find something today within the next hour. If you are a couch potato and you spend all of your time on the sofa watching TV, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, just wasting time, 
You need to find something in your house that needs cleaned or repaired. Get up and do it. Get off the couch now. Turn off my show and go fix that broken window or, or go, you know, edge and mow your yard. Do something. Paint that wall outside that's been needing to be painted for three years and you haven't done it. If you haven't found a good means of employment, for heaven's sake, go out and find it today. Be productive, build something, grow something, create something, because that level of productivity causes you to have more self-worth. If you don't believe that you have the ability to grow, produce, or increase, what good are we in this world? If you want to live a better life, productivity is key. We cannot simply sit back and absorb, 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 and absorb and not be wrung out. You have to go out and do something productive for you to have any sense of self-worth. The person that loses their sense of self-worth are some of the first people to become suicidal. And at that point, you are not in your right mind and you could potentially take yourself off of this planet Heaven forbid that's that ever becomes anyone that watches this show. Get off the couch, do something. Productivity is key. Be involved. Stop missing the important things. I have an agent on my team and we love to tease her. Elva, if you're watching the show, love you. Elva is gone all the time. And that's the blessing about real estate. We can do real estate from wherever. Love Elva. Elva has had many family members that have battled health issues. She has lost family members just like we have. She has a huge family and they're all over the country and she has friends all over the world. So Elva travels a lot. Elva drives, Elva flies, Elva goes on a cruise, Elva flies to Puerto Rico. She zip lines through the rainforest. She travels to meet her family and friends. She helps her children, her nieces and nephews, and is always gone. And we end up doing a lot of the back end work, the paperwork, making things happen. Elva is out being involved, doing the things that it takes to be there. And I recommend that we all learn to do this better. Be involved. Stop missing the important things like showing up for others. My daughters had friends in school and we would be at a choir concert and they had great friends that sang in choir with them. And one of them would have a parent that showed up at the end of the concert or didn't show up at all. And we would give some of them a ride home from school, um, a sporting event, a, a concert, whatever it is. And the things that hurt you when you were a child, uh, when you had parents um, close family members or friends that didn't show up for you, it changed you, right? And it did not change you for the better. There are people in my life that did not show up that did change me for the better because I developed enough grit and determination to develop a culture of my own that says, if they don't show up for me, I will show up for myself. We've done multiple shows on that exact topic as well you have to become the best person you can be for you and those in your immediate circle. But if you want to live a better life, you have got to learn to start doing this for other people. And as you do, your life will become enriched as well. When you become involved, you start going to the choir concerts and the track meets and the football games, right? For other people, those people start showing up for the important things in your life. They do. We have youth in our in our youth group at church that don't have dads. Some of them don't have moms. Some of them live in group homes. And we have we have engaged the other students to start telling us when a student has a football game or a track meet or a concert or a volleyball game or something that they have won or or exceeded in, uh, excelled in, or they've gotten an award. And we want to reward those people. We want to show up for them. I have found myself going to, to junior high school and middle school sporting events for some of the kids and youth. I'm not the best at it, but when we find out that someone has something going on, these aren't my kids, but they're in my church family, their family. So we want to go and support them. 
do you have a niece or a nephew that's got something coming up? Can you be there? Is this, do you have a, a friend whose kid is having a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah? Are you going to go as they become an adult? Are you going to your friend's daughter's quinceanera because she turned 15 and she's becoming a young lady? Be involved. Stop missing the important things in life and quit letting business always pull you away from the important things like being there for your children, for your spouse, for important things. If it's important to them, shouldn't it be important to you if you claim that you love them? Our pastor, Jesse Gibson, uh, taught a wonderful message at church a couple of weeks ago um, about Elijah and Elisha. Um, and Elisha, of course, wanting the double blessing, the, the, the double portion, wanted Elijah's mantle to fall on him. But the reason that that happened, a lot of that was because um, his heart was broken for the things that break the heart of God. And that was the main part of the message that I got. And there's, there's some songs that have been out about that in the past, but the message was eye opening. If it's important to God, should it not be important to us? Should our hearts not break? for our friends and family members whose hearts are breaking. Doesn't it make sense that we should show up for them at the important times for the important things in our life? Number one, for the Lord. Yes, have a heart like God. We talked about that in your faith. Have a heart like God's. If there's something that breaks his heart, it should break ours as well. Um, and not showing up for friends and family members are, are some of the things that I think truly break their heart. And then moving on into this, family is so important. To live a better life, you need to be more involved, not to the pushy amount, but more involved with family. And I was going to change this heading to, and I actually had it typed in and it said family, family, or frenemies. Um, and family is your blood kin, your blood ties, right? People that are children of your same parents. And many of you have stepbrothers, stepsisters. You also have half brothers, half sisters um, and other relatives. So family was born and in into your family, in your bloodline. But then you've got family and that's your, your friends that have become family. You can call them the family. Extended family, people that have been adopted in, grafted in, like we are grafted into the body of Christ. Um, those people are important, but then you also have frenemies and they're people that may be your competitors and you, they say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, mainly so you can keep an eye on them. But at the end of the day, family is, is family. And we're, we're in this conference. I've been going to this conference at the church and one of the pastors that's, that was speaking was talking about family and emphasize this. And we have, we have friends and family members that, that maybe do not know the Lord. Uh, maybe you're watching the show and you've never developed a relationship with Christ. But if you have, you probably have family members that have not. And these things are important. I believe that we all need to have a, a firm belief um, in Jesus Christ, that he is the way that we come to God the Father. Um, and that's that's important. That's the culture that we have created in our family is we believe in Jesus and we are saved and we will all reside and reign with Jesus forever and ever in eternity when we have passed from this life into the next family. But we have family members that maybe do not know the Lord or they have walked away from the Lord. These things are important. You can't force someone to be family, right? Um, but if you want to live a better life, you are going to have family that's in your life and there you're going to have family that is out of your life. And the thing that I have had to uh, create this culture in my family is that those people who choose to be in the family are the family. And you have family members that may choose not to become part or remain part of your family. That doesn't mean they're not family. It just means they're not part of your immediate family circle of family. If you have created boundaries that they believe are too exclusive for them to be included in your part of the family, there's probably a toxic trait or a lifestyle that does not fit into your culture. 
and you have to protect that culture above all else. I had a friend, a new friend I met at church recently. And after church was over, we had prayed for his wife's uh, relative, I believe mother or mother-in-law that was going in for surgery. And we prayed for them that the surgeons would perform a swift and, and proper surgery, that the mother would re, re, respond and heal well, and that God would heal her through this surgery and that he would work a miracle. And then he came back a few minutes later and wanted to speak with one of the pastors because of a family issue and having issues with a mother-in-law and a, and a grandmother-in-law and not having peace in the family. And I said, I have a wonderful pastor at my church who, who, is, who has dealt with this exact same topic. And, um, and, uh, and we connected the two and had a wonderful time of counseling and prayer there after church rule for a few minutes. And it was all based on these topics. You have family, you have the family, you have the people that have removed themselves from the family, but then there are also people that will not allow themselves to confine or conform themselves to the culture you have created for your family and your life and to pre protect your, your, your loved ones. And that's on them. But sometimes we have, if we have that culture and that culture is correct and we're doing the best we can, the best way for us to help that family member who is excluded or feels excluded is to pray for them. And when we're praying for them, we're not praying for them to see the light. We're praying for all of us, um, for all of us to have a better understanding maybe of their life, but to help change our heart for that person. And when we can pull that and internalize that and pray for that person, it helps us create another facet to our culture that may be more inclusive of that person that will we can find some common ground and say, hey, you know, you may have done this and we're not going to talk about that. Where where can we move move forward from today and learn how to relate better or or let's have this understanding that this is the life you're going to live. Man, I love you and you're going to go live your life and I'm going to go live my life. And that's a choice. We're going to choose to love each other from afar. Sometimes you have to love someone from a distance. It doesn't mean you don't love them but they're no longer, if they won't allow themselves or you can't allow those actions to be included in the culture and the environment that you are cultivating for your life, your family, your business, that's just part of life. And that's okay because some people you have to remove and some people remove themselves. But the family, the people that have chosen to stay, remain and, and become a part of you or remain a part of the family is family and you've got to you've got to support that. Stick up for that. Keep that the key part of your culture. Productivity, family, your circle, your friends, all of those things, your support, um, support network. These things are vitally important for you to live a better life. And if you ask my wife if I'm always this positive and she says, yes, these are the reasons why. My family is the people that have chosen to be in my family and remain in my family. And I love them and will nurture them and honor them and, and nourish them. Um, my circle of friends has gotten much smaller. My social media presence has grown, but those are social media friends. I try to be as positive and uplifting as I can to everyone that I can. Hello, Lisa. It's better late than never. Good for tuning in. Cody, thank you as well. I'll be seeing you later today, my friend, as well. And we'll develop some productivity and nurturing over lunch. Hallelujah. I love it. I hope this has helped you today. Uh, six tips for living a better life. If you can work on all of these things in your life, um, I believe that will help you have a more positive outlook. It will help you become more friendly, more kind, more loving, and more productive and be happier in life. Until next time, this has been Patrick Lee with Midweek Motivation Live saying courage begins at the end of your comfort zone. Let's get a little uncomfortable today. Make a new friend. Think a new thought. Live a better life. I'll see you next time. If I can ever help you, don't hesitate to reach out to me too at uh, my digital business card in the, in the comments below this video. 
Um, you can also see it there on the screen, patricklee.work. Reach out to me, get an appointment in my calendar. If I can help you in your life, I'd love to do that. Thank you, Ann, for your support watching the show. Love you as well and support you as well in your life coaching growth and business. That is incredible. We always can turn a new page, a new chapter and start a new facet to the diamond we are becoming in life, Ann, and that is you. You guys have a wonderful time. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.